I don't buy first wave, second wave, third wave. If it's not a third wave, what is it? Just one entire pandemic? One awful onslaught of a horrible disease. Yeah, like stop calling it waves. Like just call it what it is. It's an ongoing pandemic that we have failed to overcome. If we see Louisiana and Florida spiking, Indonesia with grim data as well, can you support the giving of money to make the unvaccinated vaccinated? Is, is that money well spent? I think so. And so the thing is that we are now a global community. People travel, variants spread. Delta has spread worldwide extremely rapidly. Unless we curb, vac improve vaccination rates, we will not decrease the number of circulating virus, and thus we will continue to have variants of concern. So we have to vaccinate globally if we are going to overcome this. All right. So meanwhile, as Tom Keen lobbies for $1,000 for getting vaccinated, there is a question going forward about what is more likely to get people actually to bite the bullet and get the shot. A recent Kaiser survey actually showed that three out of every 10 unvaccinated individuals said that they would be more willing to get inoculated if the FDA officially approved the mRNA vaccinations, which could have come as soon as early next month, at least when it comes to Pfizer. What's your sense of how realistic this is, that that would actually open up a huge surge in people willing to get vaccinated? So about getting FDA approved, I think it's extremely possible. We have more data for this one vaccine than we have for many of our other studies. Um, and I think we're well on the path to comfort and FDA approval. Will it change people's likelihood of getting vaccines? Not unless we convert, like com uh, manage the negative media that we see around vaccine complications. Um, individuals consistently overestimate the likelihood of getting sick post vaccines unless we manage that dialogue, make more transparent use of the data that how safe the vaccines are. I don't think we'll get people to that comfort level. Dr. Hansadi, the Delta variant has only set that communication back as breakthrough uh, as breakthrough infections start to make the headlines. What do we know about breakthrough infections and how closely, frankly, the federal government is even tracking this to be able to give us an accurate read of how effective the vaccine is at preventing infection? So it's tracking it extremely closely. We have vaccine data on all patients that are usually admitted to a hospital, and we know um, what the COVID positive status is, right? So we have the data. Um, breakthrough cases are known, expected. What is really positive is that even in those breakthrough cases requiring hospitalization, we have not been seeing deaths in vaccinated COVID positive mm. individuals, while we are seeing death in unvaccinated COVID positive individuals. Bhakti so to, vaccines are still effective. Yeah. Bhakti, to a pro like you, what's the percent vaccinated where you sort of say in your head medically all clear? Is it 70 percent, 80 percent, 98 percent? I mean, if you look at typhoid or smallpox, et cetera, what's the number in your head? So traditionally, the number that we aim for to get herd immunity is greater than 90%, but that is heavily influenced by human behavior. So vaccines are one part of the puzzle in mitigating transmission. The other is our human behavior, such as masking, such as social distancing, such as avoiding situations where large numbers of individuals, vaccinated and unvaccinated, are mixing together.